It's time to take you through this week in Nichols Athletics as we bring you the best of Colonel Sports from Nichols State University. This week in Nichols Athletics is presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. This week in Nichols Athletics is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, either you're local or you're not. Good evening and welcome to This Week in Nichols Athletics presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. Coming up in our show, we've got highlights from Colonel Hoops as the men's team put a scare into nationally ranked Missouri and the women came out firing on all cylinders in their home opener. We'll also take a look at some of the recent improvements to the athletic facilities here on campus and pay tribute to several Nichols students who are earning their college degrees after making tremendous sacrifices for this country. That and much more is on the way. We begin, though, with a great rivalry on the gridiron, the annual River Bell Classic between Nichols and southeastern Louisiana. The Colonels had won 10 of the last 12 meetings and five straight here in Thibodeau. Now, with Nichols going through a tough campaign this year in southeastern, gunning for a school record fifth victory in Southland Conference play, this one looked to be stacked in favor of the Lions, but as they say, you can throw the records out the window when these teams play. Saturday night, senior night at John L. Guidry Stadium as Nichols honors 15 of its players in their final home game. Starting center Gerald Gruding and his parents are greeted by head coach Charlie Stubbs and his wife Sandy Gruding, a four-year O-line starter out of New Orleans. Kerry Guidry following him, the Southland All-Academic honoree out of nearby Homa, a semifinalist this year for the William V. Campbell Trophy. And they came to compete for this. The newly designed River Bell Classic Trophy unveiled Saturday night. We'll have more on that later. Nichols on their initial drive marches 82 yards in 14 plays, but a miscue on the handoff to Marcus Washington on fourth and goal at the one leads to a fumble. The Colonels recovered, but you can't advance a fumble on fourth down, and Southeastern winds up with the football, and that one hurt. The Lions pulled every rabbit out of their hat on Saturday, including their first fake punt of the night here early in the second quarter. The punter, Beaumont, laterals to reserve quarterback Jordan Barnett, launching it down to field to Mott. The Colonels force a fumble. The ball comes loose, but the Nichols, uh, excuse me, the Southeastern long snapper, Rogers Mueller, recovers it for Southeastern. What a wild sequence. Two plays later, Rashid Harrell takes the handoff at the three and muscles it in. Seven nothing Southeastern a minute into the second quarter. The Colonels special teams Failed on a fake punt of their own, but they come up big here. Terry Lucas with the block. The ball picked out of the air by Aldaro Russell. He returns it to the Southeastern 41. But Nichols commits two penalties before cornerback Todd Washington winds up picking off Landry Klon's pass here. Landry intercepted, and the Lions would take over at the Colonel 39 with 9 minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the half. SLU going on a seven-play drive, and again, it's Harrell running right for four yards and the score. His second TD of the game and third of the year, he rushed for 72 yards on 18 carries. It's 14-0 Southeastern. Nichols then puts together a nice 12-play, 53-yard drive of their own. It's capped by this 28-yard field goal by Andrew Dolan. Nichols down by 11, two minutes before the half, and then they force a three and out, and the fake punt denied this time. 14-3 Lions, your score at the break. Nichols goes three and out to begin the second half before Southeastern pieces together a 13-play, 64-yard drive. Nathan Stanley hooks up with tight end Jeremy Myers. He's in, and it's 21-3. Early fourth quarter now, Nichols looking to rally. Klon finds Jordan Hanbury down the seam. 30 yards, puts the ball to Lion three. Next play, the handoff to Washington. He motors in. TD number six for Washington this year. The PAT is blocked. It's 21 to 9. Nichols still in it. Then this happened. The ensuing kickoff by Ben Landry taken by Xavier Roberson at the 12. He cuts inside, eludes one colonel, and then outruns the rest. Roberson with his second kickoff return for a touchdown in as many weeks. He had 191 all-purpose yards on the night. While Klon delivered a 38-yard scoring strike to Andrew Wynn to pull back within 12, Southeastern goes back to trickery with 4.30 to play, a fake field goal. Mott, the holder, finds Myers in the back of the end zone. Second TD for Myers. Southeastern seemingly pulled out every gadget play they had. 35-16 to ball game. Here's the final play. And then it was simply a race to see which Lion could get to the trophy first. Southeastern taking the River Bell Classic. 35-16, to your final score. This one tough to watch. It was the first time Southeastern has defeated Nichols in consecutive years 
since 1979 and 1980. Nichols goes winless in Southland play, falling to 1-9 overall. They'll take on nationally ranked Oregon State next Saturday in Corvallis. That game originally scheduled for opening weekend, but postponed due to Hurricane Isaac. On to hoops now. The Nichols men's basketball team put up a fight against Vanderbilt on opening weekend. The game was tied with a few minutes remaining in the first half before the Commodore seized control and won by 15 in a respectable showing for Nichols. On Friday night, an even stiffer challenge from the SEC as the Colonels visited 14th ranked Missouri. Let's go to Mizzou Arena in Columbia. There's Tiger guard Phil Pressey, the SEC preseason player of the year. First possession coming up here and the feed from Pressy to UConn transfer Alex Oriaki. The post up on Lachlan Press going baseline for the score. Oriaki with 10 points in the first half. The Colonels didn't play scared. Around the arc it goes. Sam McBeth for the three in the left corner. Sam scored 10 and Nichols with the early advantage. Four minutes in, pressed off the mark with the three. Keon Bell clears the board for Missouri. The outlet to Pressy and he gets the runner to fall. That was Pressy's only bucket of the half. Nichols down 9-3, and head coach J.P. Piper calls for a timeout. The Colonels then start to close the gap. Ball movement inside and out. It's freshman T.J. Carpenter on the baseline. He drives on Pressy. T.J. shot 5 of 10 and scored 14 to go along with five boards. Nichols within two, about eight minutes in. Pressy with a crossover, misses, but Oriaki snags the board and finishes. Mizzou with 17 second chance points. It's 11-7 Tigers. About midway through the half, Fred Hunter on the baseline. The 16-footer drops. Nichols down just one. Fred had 11 by the break. But Mizzou goes on a 13-3 run late first half. Pressy swings to Bell, the tough runner. Nichols down 11. Bell, 13.7 boards. Colonels looking to pare down the deficit. Macbeth finds Carpenter for the open look three. TJ with a team-high three bonus balls. It's a four-point contest. Mizzou, though, winds up going into the locker room up seven. Negus Webster Chan with a three-pointer. 32-25 Tigers at the half. Mizzou goes on a 12-4 run, though, to begin half number two. Pressy misses a pull-up three, but Oriaki throws it down. He had 17 points and 10 rebounds, leading the Tigers in both categories. Mizzou up as many as 21, but Nichols still hustling. Pedro Maciel gets to the loose ball, and Hunter finishes on the dish from Macbeth. Fred with a game-high 22 points. Maciel eluding Pressy over to Prest, down to Hunter for the lay, and Prest held without a point or a board, but he did recorded team high four helpers final 12 minutes mizzou up comfortably Macbeth off the mark on the three pressy with the board ahead to tony criswell for the finish and foul a nice effort by nichols mizzou just too good they take it 74 to 54. we spoke with head coach jp piper earlier today to get his thoughts on the mizzou game i was really pleased with the effort our guys gave against missouri that's a 14th ranked team in the country and uh, I thought we played great in the first half. Uh, we had a few hiccups uh, that we should have controlled or the game could have been even tighter than it was at half. But to go in down seven on the road to that team I thought was outstanding. Uh, we knew they would make a run at us in the second half. They did. We put them on the free throw line a little too much, and they got a few good looks. Uh, two big positives, though. Uh, the Pressy kid, who's a preseason South Southeastern Conference Player of the Year, He's on All-American watch list, was held to six points, and they only scored four points on us in transition. So there were some things within the game that I thought were outstanding. Uh, we've got to get a little bit better at guarding the three-point line, and we've got to quit fouling so much. But um, really, really pleased with the effort we got. A lot of fans were worried this year coming in about whether Fred Hunter was going to be the, the Fred Hunter of old. He might be the best Fred Hunter we've ever seen. No question. Uh, he is in a wonderful place. In fact, I was talking to one of my former assistants who helped recruit Fred here about uh, how much he's matured. And it's the little things that maybe don't necessarily show up uh, when you watch him play that are making the difference in what you see when he plays. His, his understanding of the game is a much more cerebral player. His preparation going into the game is better. Uh, he's playing harder for longer. Um, and he's really fun to coach right now because he's he's asking questions throughout the game, always trying to gather information and insight within the game to make himself a little better, get an advantage here or there. So uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous year for Fred. I pray he stays healthy, and um, he's as locked in and is, is, is in as good a place as I've ever seen him. So uh, that bodes well for us. 
You get an offense right now from from three main threats, Fred, Sam McBeth, and T.J. Carpenter. How do you start working the other guys in? I, I think it'll come. Um, you know, Dan Trell, as you know, is out right now with some academic issues related to uh, some things that were beyond his control, quite frankly, some administrative stuff. He'll be back when exams are done. Uh, I think he's a double-digit guy in scoring and, and hopefully close to that in rebounding. And then I think Lachlan Press is going to round into a guy that can give you 10 to 12 a night, and Shane is flirting with becoming that. Uh, we saw it in the exhibition against Mobile. Um, tough sledding for him against Missouri. He got to the free throw line a few times, and he had some good looks kind of roll in and out. I think at our level he makes those plays. So you're looking at probably four or five guys who are a threat to get double figures, and I think that's tremendous balance for us You know, by the time we get into January, February. You have to play so tough of a, a non-conference schedule. How how difficult is it, I guess, to um to see exactly where you guys are at because the measuring stick right now are the Vanderbilts and the Missouris of the world? Well, I think we're in a good place because uh, I quite honestly expected that to be a 30, 40-point loss. Uh, that's the 14th-ranked team in the country. They have a couple of guys there that are going to possibly play in the NBA, um, maybe even first-round draft picks. And so for us to go in there and be down seven at the half and, and lose by 20 and not be pleased with the way we defended or scored the ball in the second half, I, I think we're okay. Um, now, you know, the question I pose to my team is, is, is that really the 14th ranked team in the country? Maybe they're not as good as we thought they were, but I'd like to believe we're, we're pretty good and maybe we're uh, better than we thought we would be. So uh, we'll see as time goes on, but... Uh, two really good teams, and, and I thought we fared well against both of them. And when we go back and look at tape, we're a little frustrated that we didn't do more things better. Um, I've got to remind myself it's early in the year, it's a new group, and we're still learning. Um, but tons of positives, and I think the lessons we're getting out of these games are going to make it better for us when we get to competition that's on our own level, and hopefully we'll get a peek at that here coming up this next week when we get to face UNO at home. After Pedro Maciel was injured prior to last season, Shane Relier as a freshman steps into the point guard position, really did a solid job for you. Now Pedro is back healthy again. It looks like the guys have split minutes down the middle so far. Are you going in one direction or another? You're going to wait and see how it plays out. Well, I think it's Shane's, and, and Pedro and I have talked about that. Shane's the guy. Um, Shane's been getting in foul trouble, um, and, and I think that will settle itself out. If it doesn't, that's a concern. Uh, but, you know, he's guarding – an All-American, and he picks up a couple of fouls battling and competing. They weren't silly fouls. They weren't cheap fouls. They, they, he got his money's worth. Um, the bright spot is Pedro comes in off the bench, and we don't lose a step. We were fine. Um, but Shane has, has got a year under his belt playing for me. Pedro's been a two-year player at the college level but hadn't played for me. So um, I have a little bit more of a comfort level with Shane knowing what I want on the floor. Pedro's still learning and figuring that out. Uh, but two very solid players, and uh, I think we're good at that position. Um, no concerns at this point. Uh, and to be honest, was pleasantly surprised by what Pedro gave us. I thought Pressy's speed and athleticism would cause Pedro some problems. He did a great job of keeping him in front and battling and even actually turned him over a couple times. So uh, I think we're going to be fine with both of those guys. You know, um uh, Shane has suffered with some ankle issues last year and early this year, so um, you, you may actually see minutes flip-flop back and forth. Maybe Pedro plays a little more one night because Shane's nicked up or vice versa, but um, probably the best depth we've had at the point since I've been here. Two really solid guards. All right, Coach, have yourself a great Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you on Monday, all right? Thanks, Mike. That's the head coach of the Colonels, J.P. Piper, up next. For Nichols, a matchup against future Southland rival UNO coming up here at Stouffer Gym Monday night at 6.30. You can listen to it on the Colonel Sports Radio Network and watch it on Colonel's All Access on our home site at GoColonels.com. We'll be back with more of This Week in Nichols Athletics presented by State Farm Insurance right after these messages. State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> That ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. 
At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players. We love the fans. And you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork. Or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game. And you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. We're back here with you on This Week in Nichols Athletics, presented by State Farm Insurance. The Colonel women's basketball team opened the home portion of their schedule against Louisiana Monroe, looking to avenge last year's loss to the Warhawks. Stowe for Jim Friday night. Nichols came out ready to go here. We take you to the first minute of action. Jean-Marie Guillory with the ball high post kicks out to Leanne McCarthy. And the three here, she gets a friendly bounce. Leanne on her way to a big night for Nichols. Jasmine Scott. Heck of a game defensively, one of her six steals. She hands off to K.K. Babin, whipped ahead to Alicia Allen for the lay-in. It's 5-0. Nichols with 16 points on the fast break. ULM finally gets on the board at the 16:35 mark. Alexi Tugler to Alicia Simmons on the pick and slip. Simmons with a game-high 22 points and 12 rebounds. Nichols builds a double-digit lead midway through the half. Babin dishes to Keyshawn Williams in the corner, driving into the lane for the good look. 11.6 boards for Williams. Eight-minute mark, Imani White to Scott High Post. Penetration and the hoop. The lead is 15. Scott with a tremendous night off the bench. Nichols up 24-9. Alicia Allen grabs the Babin miss, resets, but then sees the opening. Allen, one of five colonels in double figures. She had 10 points. Under six before the break now, and Babin feeding Scott. She finds Jenny Nash for the tough paint shot here. Nash scored 10. It's 28 to 11. Colonels Nichols up 18 at the half. Second stanza, Elexer Tugler skips to Jasmine Shaw and down to Simmons for the lay in. ULM within 16 here, but that's as close as they would get. Nice cross screen coming up here by White on the inbounds. Look at it, left lane line. Freeing up Allen. The Colonels simply dominated this contest late in the game now. And Williams rebounding off the Alexi Tugler miss, going coast to coast. The Colonels were up by as many as 30. They win 80 to 65. Nichols off to a solid start. They're headed now to the Basketball Travelers Invitational at Texas Tech for three games beginning on Friday night. Well, folks, uh, we're going to turn things over now to Ashley Bull, who has what was left, the remainder of Nichols Sports this past week. Here's Ashley Bull. The Nichols volleyball team challenged a top foe at the Southland Tournament, while the football program honored local heroes and competed for a brand new prize. The volleyball team entered into the tournament opener against regular season co-champ Sam Houston State. The Colonels were determined to win, but came up short in the second set. Senior and all Southland honoree Jennifer Brandt sees one repetitive obstacle when playing the Bearcats. When they came here for home, I don't think we played to the best ability that we could. And when we went to play them, it was kind of the same thing. We played the first game really well, the second game we died off, and then the third game we played really well. So I think it's just kind of that second game hump that is so like hard for us to get over. And then for the tournament, that happened too. We played really well in the first game. In the second game, we lost our energy. In the third game, we fought back. So I just think that we played well against them. It's just that second game that always gives us trouble. Head coach Patrick Hills explains the team's finishing efforts against Sam Houston State. Our offensive attack, when we were in system, we hit the ball well. We did the things that we wanted to do and that we had talked about. We got into some trouble with serve receive, and when we're in trouble in serve receive, we're not in system. It's tough for us to do anything well. Um, and they're a very good defensive team. Uh, I thought that defensively we did well. There was a couple of breakdowns, but uh, we made a lot of good digs on their big hitters that kept us in the match. The Colonels fell in straight sets, finishing the season with an 11-19 and record. The 22nd annual Riverbell Classic marked a new era in the long-standing duel between Nichols and the Southeastern Lions as they played for a redesigned trophy. This new prize represents the unique rivalry between the Colonels and the Lions. Athletic directors Bart Belairs and Rob Bernardi explain the joint efforts. This uh, trophy is a, a kind of a symbol of the collaborative effort that we've had in, in putting this all together. I was telling the, the, the makers of the trophy that we pulled the trophy out of the closet about six years ago. When we started. So the opportunity to dust off that old trophy um, and refurbish it and start kind of a new tradition here with us uh, is a, 
uh, a great opportunity to, to reignite the, the great rivalry that we've had for the last 20 or more years. When you have two schools this close together, the tradition, uh, you know, and, and there is that sense of, you know, both camaraderie and competition, which I think really makes it good. While the Colonels and Lions battled for the trophy, it paled in comparison to the battles that several Nichols students have been through. The football program honored Nichols' own heroes at last Thursday's game as part of its annual Wounded Warriors Night. Among them was 23-year-old Lance Corporal Jacob Billiot of the United States Marine Corps. In January 2011, Billiot was run over by a 13-ton vehicle. After several months of hospitalization and rehab, he has medically retired and is working towards a degree in petroleum services here at Nichols. Bill Yacht bestowed some words of wisdom upon the Colonel's football team. It doesn't matter what happens to you in your life, no matter how hard life gets, no matter how rough things will get, you can always come back and do something, you can turn it into something good. So, whenever you think that you're down and out and you got no other option, nowhere else to go, there's always another way to get out, there's always a way to better yourself, there's always a way to make a lot for yourself. Honestly, I know it's cliche, but you can literally accomplish anything you put your mind to. No matter how hard it is, you can accomplish it. You just have to fight for it and want to work hard enough for it. Nothing in life worth having is ever easy. So if it's, if it's hard and it's taking a rough time getting it, it's probably worth it in the end. For This Week in Nichols Athletics, I'm Ashley Bull. Thanks, Ashley. It's time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Either you're local or you're not, Rouse's Supermarkets are local with their roots established in Thibodeau in 1923. Trust Rouse's for great food and great values. Go to Rouse's.com. This week's winner is Jasmine Scott, the junior from Baton Rouge, put up big numbers in wins over UNO and ULM. Jasmine Scott, our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week. We've got more coming up. On This Week in Nichols Athletics, presented by State Farm Insurance, coming up next, the Colonels are building for the future. Stay with us. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players. We love the fans. And you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork. Or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game. And you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgate. <laughs> The athletic department not only takes pride in its student athletes, but also in maintaining its facilities. In recent years, the department has undergone several renovations. These changes are hoping to not only keep school spirit alive, but to add something different to the program. From the outside looking in, it might be tough for students to understand why updating facilities are important to the athletic program during lean budget times. Michael Davis, the assistant vice president of facilities, realizes renovating when necessary is important in many different ways. Primarily important for the recruiting of new students and to maintain pride in, in, in our athletic programs. Um, if you go around our conference to take a look at the other facilities, particularly with schools in Texas, it is, it's very difficult for us to compete against those schools with inferior uh, facilities. John L. Guidry Stadium, home of the Manning Passing Academy, just received the new elevator and facade facelift. The previous elevator was no longer operational after decades of use, and this project solved both the safety and aesthetic issue. The elevator and the shaft that was there was original to the structure that was built in 1972. Uh, we began having deterioration problems inside, and it became a safety issue. Just across the street from the stadium is the soccer field and the new field house, a project that has been in the works for about eight years. This venture started when the roof was donated by a private donor in the hopes that soon it would be a permanent place for the team to relax, study, and train. Now that the field house is completed, the women finally have something of their own. Me personally, I was excited. It was something that I anticipated being here uh, when, I, when I first got here. But I can't imagine how excited the players were. You know, uh, quite a few of the players 
even well before the current seniors that we had expected something like this and to finally have it you know it's 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 a day that they they'll remember for a long time you know that you can even see the emotion in their faces and everything was was a, a mix of joy excitement and and a little uh, a little relief that that they're finally capable to call this place their own the field house also has a huge advantage when it comes to recruiting season uh, not too many other schools even in our conference have anything like it right next to the the field uh, the other thing is a lot of the girls, even even in our state and everything, a lot of times share locker rooms. Uh, they're still playing on fields that are football fields. And so to have something this nice and this special dedicated to women's soccer is different. And it, and it shows them that their sport's kind of getting uh, the recognition that it deserves. And if they're coming here, it's serious. Within the last couple of years, head baseball coach Seth Thibodeau has led an improvement at Raymond E. Didier Field. Just last fall, many new things were added to the field, including new bleachers, a right field party deck, and a video board placed right under the scoreboard. Old dugouts are in the process of being replaced for the start of this season. I don't want our stadium to always look the same. I, I think it's, it's, it's our job, uh, and it's my job especially, to make sure that there's some type of improvement every single year. I don't, I don't like staying the same. I don't like staleness. I want to continue to get better and better every year and, and make it bigger and better than, than it is already. Not only will the new dugouts be an exciting new adjustment for the baseball players and recruits, it is something the fans should enjoy as well. It's great for recruiting, um, but not just recruiting. It's great for fans. It's going to be fan-friendly. There's not going to be any uh, restricted view anymore. So. You're going to be able to come out here and really enjoy a ball game. The looks of it are going to be outstanding. Our fans, our administration, our alumni, our former players that have worked really hard on this field and played here, former coaches, everyone involved in the Nichols baseball family will be able to come out here and be extremely proud of what they see. Dugouts are, are going to be sunk uh, 42 inches, and, and, and um, they're going to be deeper now. At, uh, they've been eight feet above ground, which makes it really tough to, to see. With recent budget cuts to contend with, the athletic department has become creative and industrious in finding new sources of funding. All of the projects that we've done within the, the last several years, the football stadium, uh, the baseball field, uh, the soccer facility, even the rec center, um, uh, renovations to Peltre Auditorium, all of these things are all coming from different sources of funds, but all dedicated strictly towards facility improvements. In other words, they cannot be spent for any other reason. We cannot take that money, use it for salaries for any of our employees here. We can't use it for supplies or anything like that. It can only be used for facility upgrades. So I, I think it says a lot about our organization if we're able to get things done um, with budget cuts. That says a lot about leadership here. That says a lot about what you're trying to do. If we sit back on our hands and say, oh no, budget cuts, we can't do it, then what are we trying to accomplish as an organization? Updating is crucial when it comes to keeping up with athletic programs at other universities. The changes taking place at Nichols are an exciting reason for students and student athletes to keep their spirits high. Reporting for This Week in Nichols Athletics, I'm Summer Davis. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you again next week.